Yes. All right, guys. Today we're going to work on the homework from last night. Okay. Um, the first part, one through six, is fairly easy. Ashley, are you paying attention? Number one is your base. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your, uh, not your base, your parent function is log base two. So you could either graph that function into your calculator and then connect, make the connections. Uh, I think you guys can just do that on your own. Okay, so Desmos calculator, let's skip that one, okay? Well, you can use Desmos calculator to finish this part, okay? Let's skip to something that, we, that we're struggling with, okay? Let's look at number seven. Did I do this example uh, with you guys in class? No. No? Okay. If I did, then follow along. The second time, it might make more sense. And then you were in sixth period, Jonathan. How could I have gone over it? I wasn't here. What we're doing is we're looking at our notes, okay? Our notes from yesterday. A lot of the information is going to come from this general form. Okay, there's going to be certain things that are going to change the letter A, C, H, and K. Okay, the letter K tells you to go up or down. The letter H tells you to move right or left. The letter A tells you to multiply and the letter C tells you to divide. Okay, so all the information is coming from the notes that we took yesterday and the two videos that we watched. Okay, the first thing I like you guys to do is go here. Um, to number seven, and you're going to compare it to that general form that's in green. According to the general form, what would be the value of A? A is three. Very good. What is the value of B? One third. Good. C? Uh, there's nothing there, so there's just going to be one. Okay? How about H? Zero and then K is two. Can someone answer, please? All right, your asymptote is always dependent on your H value, which in this case is zero. So that means that your domain is the vertical asymptote, which is X greater than zero. You don't know? It's always going to be negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? If you are in any period other than third and seventh, this is what I expect you to be able to do, okay? If you're in third and seventh period, then I expect you to know how to do the box. You're not in third or seventh, so don't worry about it, okay? All right, the next thing that we're going to do is graph the function. So put this function into your calculator. We're going to go to our calculator. You're going to open up a, a graph page. Bless you. And you're going to press Control and then 10 to the power of X. Okay? And in that function, you're going to put log base 1 divided by 3. Ah. I didn't like what I did log base 3, and then inside the parentheses, you're going to put x. Outside the parentheses, you're going to put plus 2. And I can't forget about the 3 that I'm multiplying by. So 3 times log base 3 of x plus 2. I'm sorry, it shouldn't be 3. It should be 1 third. Okay, check your work with mine. Make sure that you're graphing it correctly into your calculator. Thank you. Tutoring does require some effort on your part. Okay, and then you press enter. And there's your points. Okay, and there's your graph. So I'm going to do control T so that I can see the ordered pairs. I have an ordered pair at 1, 2, and at 3, negative 1. So I'm going to plot those two points onto my graph 1, 2, and 3, negative 1. And actually, your paper already has 3, negative 1, right? So you're going to put 1, 2 to the right 1 and up 2, and then you connect your dots. Excuse me. Do we know what the vertical asymptote is? Is there a vertical asymptote? 
Yes, there is. There's a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 0. So you're going to draw a dashed line going up and down at x is equal to 0. Okay, the last thing that you need to do is describe the transformations. So what does multiplying by 3 do to the graph? Stretch it. Good. Thanks, Isaac. So you're going to stretch by 3. The base just tells you your parent function. C is 1. H is 0. So the only other thing that's changing is K going up 2 units. So that's this is what I expect you to do for each problem. Okay? I'm going to put a pause on the recording. I want you at home and you right now to do number 8, and then we'll go over it together. Okay? Yeah, a couple of you? Okay, so let's go through it. A is negative 1. B, the value of B is 3. C is negative 1 third. Good. What's the value of H? H is 0 and K is 0. Okay, what's our vertical asymptote? X is equal to 0. It's coming straight from the H. Your domain is going to be all X values that are greater than your vertical asymptote. Your range is always going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, in your graph, what does a negative 1 do to your graph? Okay, so now you look over here. If it says A is less than 0, reflects over the y-axis. So that's your transformation that it's going to reflect. So you're going to put that down. Reflects over x-axis. Okay, your base just tells you what your parent function is, which in this case is log base 3 of x. Your c is going to tell you if you divide your x values by c. Okay, so it's actually going to be a compression. I kind of ran out of arrows. But I'm going to do it in red so that you guys can see it. So c gives you your compression. Okay, go ahead and plot these points, or not plot them, but go ahead and graph that into your calculator. Negative log base 3 of negative 1 third x. If you were at home doing it on the Desmos calculator, yes? If you don't know what happened, okay, let's do it on the calculator then. I'm going to insert a new document a new graph page. I'm going to put negative control 10 to the power of x log base 3. Inside the parentheses I'm going to put negative 1 divided by 3 and then an x. So your function should look something like this. When you look at your table, you have an order pair at negative 1, 1, and at negative 9, negative 1. Okay, so those are the two points we're going to plot. So you're going to put negative 9, negative 1, and negative 1, negative 1. So when you plot these points, Whoopsie, this should have been negative 1, positive 1. Negative 9, negative 1, and negative 1, 1. Okay. And then you plot the two points, negative 9, negative 1. And your graph is going to look something like this. And then where's our vertical asymptote? Where's that imaginary line that the graph doesn't cross? Oh, at x equals to 0. Questions? Hey, is that okay? Okay, let's go to the next one, number 9. Okay, I'm going to give you guys two minutes, pause the video, go ahead and do the first part of number nine.
Oh, number, what's the letter, what's the value of A? Negative 2, B, 1 half, C, should be 1, H, the opposite of what you see inside the parentheses, and then, um, good, positive 3 and K is negative 3. Your asymptote is the vertical asymptote, depends on the letter H, which in this case is 3. So this is your vertical asymptote, X is equal to 3. So where you see x is equal to 3, you're going to draw a dashed line going down at x is equal to 3. Okay, what's your domain? All x values what? That are greater than your vertical asymptote. Okay? And then what's your range? Negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, all the time. Good. Now I want you to describe the transformations. What does a negative 2 do to the graph? Yeah, it reflects over the x-axis. What does a minus 3 do to the graph? Okay, to the left or to the right? Shifts to the right, 3. Okay, it's going this way. And then the minus 3 on the outside, shift down 3 units. Okay, now let's say you don't know that off the top of your head. You're going to graph both of them, okay? You're going to graph the parent function and then the transformation. So I would add a new document, add a graph page, and I'm going to graph log base of 1 half. So 1 divided by 2 with an x, that's our parent function. That's what it looks like, okay? We're going to uh, put negative 2 log 1 divided by 2 of x minus 3. And then on the outside, minus 3. So if you compare the green one to the orange one, you can see the change. You can see that it flipped over, it shifted to the right, and it shifted uh, down 3. Okay, press Control t to see your table. And I see that in my orange one, I don't have any values before 3, but I have a value at 4, negative 3, and at 7, 1, right? Oh, actually 5, negative 1, too. So I'm going to put 4, negative 3, and 5, negative 1. You plot those points. 4, negative 3, and 5, negative 1. Your graph is going to look something like this. Questions? For 10, we have a 3 in front of the x. So that's going to be your C value, okay? But we have to factor out the 3. So this is actually going to be log negative, log base 3 of 3 on the outside of x minus 2. Okay, this is like a bonus type of problem. This is a higher level, okay? When you have a 3 inside, I am dividing this, both of these by the number 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1x, and 6 divided by 3 is 2, okay? So this is the equation or the function that I want you to use for this problem. I'm going to stop the timer. Go ahead and go over it with your group. And the correct answer for A is negative 1, B is 3, C is this number here, which is the number 3, H is going to be 2, and K is going to be 0. Our vertical asymptote is x is equal to 2. Your domain is x is greater than 2, and your range is negative infinity to positive infinity. The transformations are reflect over the x-axis with a negative 1. You're going to shift um, to the right 2, and then you're going to compress by... Um, 3. You're going to graph the function 
You make sure you put your vertical asymptote at x is equal to 2. 